Art is an important part of our culture. It is a universal and timeless medium, one which has impacted movements and provided hope to people all around the world. There are numerous genres and sources of inspiration, including religion, social issues, history, etc. I wanted to find out what it was that inspires four of today's local Baltimore artists. I talked to Sebastian Sears, a fairly new artist, Soledad Salame, an experienced artist, Edgar Reyes, an artist and teacher at Maryland Institute College of Art, also known as MICA, and Joyce Scott, winner of the MacArthur Grant and Baltimore native. My name is Joyce Jane Scott. I'm a Baltimore on S. I was born and reared here in Baltimore City. There was always art in my house and art in my environment. There was always literally music in the street. And, and remember, if I was born in 1948, that meant it was the 50s when people were coming back home from war. The projects were not just built for poor people. They were actually built to give people a, a leg up. And so people were very proud of their environment and it showed in the environment in which we live. These artists have been inspired by the city of Baltimore and by events that have taken place here. Soledad Salame's latest works, a collection called Are You Listening, includes a series of photographs which were taken during the Freddie Gray protests. I decided to photograph what people were saying, the schools, the Black Lives Matter, invest in school, nothing is more American than equality. Edgar Reyes sees the city as a place where he can get people to question what they are seeing in the world when they look at his work. So I think, I think in Baltimore is, it's a very interesting place because it's one of the few places where I can push and question society, uh, get a little bit of pushback, but it's a place where I, can, I feel safe. So this particular piece, um, is my my uncle who's 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 deported who lives in uh, the US now and he kind of has his back uh, to the US Joyce Scott's parents were very influential in why she is an artist today her father taught her how to be self-supportive and her mother who was a nationally known quilter taught her about the importance of creativity I was influenced by her her out and out unabashed belief that creativity was like the bedrock. If you didn't know how to do it, you'd figure it out. Or for me, you'd get a book and read it. You'd live a creative life, which meant you didn't have to lean upon others. You could develop it in yourself. Why do I do beadwork? Well, you know, my mother was my first bead teacher. When I learned the peyote stitch, it was me, a needle and thread and bead and that changed what I did because it allowed me to improvise the flat and serpentine sculptural, all of that through my skill and wit and determination. I really love collaborations and I love working with the other artists. And I think that's an important thing. Um, I've always done it since 1983. I've been collaborating with scientists, entomologists, and um, architect, uh, architects and you name it. I've worked with so many different people because I don't know every medium and I am always curious about everything and the work takes me to, the, the research takes me to a certain place and then I need help with that research and how I'm going to elaborate. You ask me what inspires me, it really is my culture. My culture meaning the world. I'm always amazed that I'll be in Thailand, and there these little guys are rapping. That is not something that was interwoven in their culture indigenously, right? The way they're rapping means that they've been listening to black music, even though their stereotypes about African Americans can be way off. The music is so profound and overwhelming that they have to use that as an element for their everyday patois. That's wild. So that kind of stuff influences me and inspires me because it shows me how globally aligned we are and how I have the ability to, in some way, inspire and influence others through my art.
inspiration can come from anywhere. Sebastian Sears was diagnosed with Asperger's as a kid and uses art to create worlds that he can escape to. I have been diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, which is a mild form of autism, and I've had to live with that growing up. I look at my artwork as more of an escape. I guess what inspires me is, is really just, just telling uh, my story and really sharing my, my experience of, of growing up here in the States undocumented and working a lot with other youth who are experiencing that themselves and really tell, uh, helping them capture and tell their story from their perspective. I went to all girls school and I, I, I wasn't so, I didn't always talk about girlies things. I was talking about what I wanted to paint and where I wanted to go one day. I'm here. You can be too. Not just stay in school, be a scholar. Not just be a scholar of books, but a scholar of life. Run after it. This is the one life you know you get. If this air is something like reincarnation, you may come back as a butterfly or a toenail. This is the one one where you are an actual human being person. Go for it, do for it, live.